Hello and welcome back to the FCC Amateur Radio General License course. It's a wonderful day in the amateur radio neighborhood and it's a great day to learn new skills and to gain new knowledge. While Morse code is not a requirement uh, for any of the uh, amateur radio licenses, it is perhaps uh, something that's uh, worthwhile learning. Uh, and this is particularly true uh, for those of you that are into emergency preparedness. And the reason why is that a low power QRP transceiver weighs literally ounces. Um, it can be thrown into a, a backpack easily and you toss in a, a lightweight dipole antenna uh, for the band that your transceiver works on, a 9 volt battery, a small keyer, and uh, you have a quite a, an efficient uh, emergency communication system that takes minimal room in your go bag. Uh, the only caveat, the only setback for this is that you have to learn Morse code if you want to understand what the response is when you send out uh, an SOS, which by the way is three dots followed by three dashes followed by another three dots. So are you ready to start this lesson? Well, let's get started. This is the Amateur Radio General Class License Course, Lesson 2, Part 2. I'm your instructor, Gary Stevens, Kilo Echo 2 Golf Sierra, that's KE2GS. This section uh, covers uh, amateur procedures or amateur operating procedures. Uh, there are five uh, exam questions from five groups. And again, this is the uh, general class FCC Element 3 license question pool uh, that is effective uh, from July 1st, 2019 until 2023. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the Morse code operating procedures, uh, procedural signals, cue signals, uh, some abbreviations, uh, how to break in, uh, the volunteer monitoring program, uh, high frequency operations, and my favorite, digital operating procedures. So let's just uh, dive right in and we'll talk about uh, Morse code operating procedures and uh, uh, the cue signals and abbreviations and such. In amateur radio uh, Morse code operations, uh, what's meant by full break-in is the ability to actually receive or detect signals in between the dots and the dashes. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that transmitting stations can receive between code characters and elements described uh, describes uh, full break-in in telegraphy. So let's see if you can understand this Morse code. So that was a snippet of Morse code sent at uh, 25 words per minute. Uh, now that's a little bit faster than I can copy, so uh, if I were receiving that, I would ask them to slow them down, and my response would be... So what I just sent was uh, QRS at 7 words per minute. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that if a CW station sends QRS, you should send slower. And I'm just assuming you guys will be sending 25 words per minute before we know it. Uh, one of the things you'll find is that uh, when you get into the Morse code or even uh, talking on the air, um, you send out a request for a specific station and everybody and their brother will want to answer it. So KN means that the name station should respond only. So for the exam, just know that when CW operator sends KN at the end of the transmission, it means they're only listening for a specific station. Uh, often we'll uh, try to use uh, frequency and it, and it might be busy and sometimes it might appear to be quiet but is actually used because we're not able to hear this, uh, one of the stations that's talking. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that the Q signal QRL means 
Are you busy or is this frequency in use? Now think back to the uh, 25 words per minute uh, Morse code uh, when considering this question. Uh, so the best speed uh, to use when answering a CQ Morse code is the fastest speed at which you're comfortable copying. Uh, don't go any faster than that. Uh, the term uh, zero beat is uh, simply a matching of a transmit frequency to the frequency of the received signal. Um, so that's something that they're expected to, you're expected to know on the exam. Uh, that photo is uh, a homemade uh, zero beat or a, a, a zero beat oscillator. Now, depending upon the band conditions, uh, a signal could be crystal clear or it could be uh, at times kind of chirpy. Um, so when uh, sending a CW, if somebody adds a C to the uh, RST report, it means that uh, your signal was uh, unstable or even chirpy. As you can imagine, uh, Morse code is a lot of repetitive operation, and uh, I guess somebody early on figured out that you could get carpal tunnel. Well, they didn't know it was carpal tunnel, but you could, uh, your arms could ache from sending Morse code. So they created pro signs, uh, which are just procedural codes. Uh, so for the exam, just know that AR pro sign is sent to indicate the end of a formal message in Morse code. And uh, like uh, the procedural codes, there's also uh, QSL or Q codes, Q signal codes, and QSL simply means that uh, I acknowledge your report. So once you do learn the Morse code, uh, it would behoove, behoove you to uh, examine the Q signals and the pro signs and other shorthand methods of uh, sending code. Uh, it should be noted that uh, the Q signals are not just for um, Morse code. They're often used in uh, voice communications as well, uh, particularly in times of static. Uh, you might not be able to understand what somebody's saying, but you might be able to capture QRN or Quebec Romeo November. Uh, so for the exam, just know that QRN means I'm troubled by your static. And the final Q code in this section that we need to know is Quebec Romeo Victor. I'm ready to receive uh, messages. Uh, so for the exam, just know that QRV means I'm ready to receive messages. So it's time to move on to uh, the next section, which is uh, the volunteer monitoring program and high frequency operations. If you've ever read the book 1984, you know that uh, Big Brother is uh, watching or listening, uh, but also Little Brother. Um, for the uh, exam, you need to know that the volunteer monitoring program describes uh, amateur volunteers who formally enlist to monitor the airwaves for rule violations. And they will find you if you act up, so be nice. Personally, I think it's much better that a fellow ham uh, is monitoring the airwaves rather than the Fed. Um, for the exam, you need to know that uh, the objectives of the mo volunteer monitoring program is to encourage amateur radio operators to self-regulate and comply with the rules. So would you rather have the federal government say you're doing bad or, you know, somebody like yourself? Now, you might think that, uh, you know, you could say whatever you want to and you'll never get caught or you can, you know, talk on whatever band. Uh, but... Uh, the self-monitoring program uh, uses uh, direction finding as a way to uh, uh, help regulate. Uh, and they can find you, you know, fairly easily, even if you just uh, intermittently talk on the radio or operate your, uh, your radio. So for the exam, you need to know that uh, direction finding is used to locate stations violating FCC rules. And it's a skill learned during uh, hidden transmitter hunts, um, and that's part of the uh, volunteer monitoring program. Um, a lot of local clubs uh, have fox hunts, and it, it's kind of fun to uh, learn how that's done. So part of uh, direction finding is knowing how to use uh, as 
uh, azimuth type map. Uh, so for the exam, they need to know that a map that shows the true bearing and distances from a particular location describes the azimuthal projection map. And uh, HF bands, you'll hear it a lot. A lot of people will call CQ. And a good way to uh, indicate that uh, clear frequency uh, or if you're looking uh, to contact someone is to repeat CQ, 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 such as CQ, 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 this is KE2GS. And then you pause and wait for somebody to respond. For the exam, know that a good way to indicate a clear frequency in the HF bands uh, that you're looking for uh, a contact for any station is just to repeat uh, CQ a few times. Um, and you follow this with your call sign, uh, do that a few times, and uh, then pause and listen, and uh, wash, rinse, and repeat. So it should be obvious that if you're, you know, with a directional antenna, you're pointing in a direction you're wanting to, to make contact. But uh, a directional antenna pointed in the opposite way, you make a long path, or you're going the long way, to make the contact. For, so the, for the exam, I uh, know the directional antenna pointed the long way or the long path uh, is 180 degrees out from the short path heading. There are times uh, when the band conditions are, are so noisy that it's difficult to understand somebody. So uh, understanding the phonetic alphabet is a good thing. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta are examples of the NATO phonetic alphabet. And it would be good uh, if you learn these. It's really easy. It just takes a, a day or so to, to memorize them. It's worth the effort. So imagine there's a knock on your door, and it's the FCC, and uh, they're wanting to know who you made contact with on July 22nd, 2018. Um, uh, well, I don't remember. Um, that's why it's a good reason to keep a record. Um, and for the exam, you need to know that the reason that many amateur uh, keep a station log is to help with a reply from the FCC request about information. You know, contests are really exciting and they're really fast paced, but uh, we need to still follow the uh, FCC minimal and normal uh, rules and regulations uh, when participating in them. Um, so, for the exam, you need to know that uh, to identify your station per FCC regulations is required when participating in contests on HF frequency. Uh, QRP is just a type of operation that uses a, a low power uh, transmitter. Um, this particular radio, the FT818, is a, a, a QRP rig. It uh, doesn't put out more than 7 watts. Uh, but for the exam, you need to know that uh, QRP operation is low power transmit operation. You know, uh, the upper atmosphere uh, creates a lot of noise and, uh, well, just atmosphere in general. Um, but high less levels of atmospheric noise are static or typical on lower HF frequencies during the summer. Uh, this shows a rainstorm with lots of lightning. And uh, if you've ever listened to uh, AM radio, uh, you can hear lightning uh, from far away. And this takes us to uh, the final segment of uh, Lesson 2, which is uh, Digital Operating Procedures. So by now, uh, we know what lower sideband is. Uh, RTTY is a remote teletype, and AFSK is Audio Frequency Shift Keying. Uh, which is uh, uh, a technique of just varying frequencies uh, to, um, to show various uh, digital states. For, for the exam, we need to know that the lower sideband is the mode normally used when sending remote teletype uh, signals via audio frequency shift keying methods with a single sideband transmitter. Uh, as you're going to learn, uh, there are many types of digital modes. Uh, one is Pactor, uh, which is a standardized uh, mode used by amateur radio operators 
uh, for uh, frequency shift keying, uh, transfers of uh, digital information over the, the uh, HF bands. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that uh, a Pactor modem or controller can be used to determine if a channel is in use by another Pactor station. Uh, to do so, you put the modem and controller or controller in a mode which allows monitoring communications without actually connecting. As we discussed earlier, uh, atmospheric conditions uh, such as uh, thunderstorms uh, can create static, and that particular static can interfere with uh, digital mode transmissions. Um, so for the exam, you need to know that the following symptoms may result uh, from signals being interfered with uh, on a PACTOR or uh, WINMORE transmission, uh, frequent retries and timeouts, long pauses in message transmission, or even uh, failure to establish a connection between stations. Once again, we find a question uh, derived from the uh, ARRL uh, band plan. Um, this one is uh, uh, for the 20 meter band, uh, we need to know for the exam that 14.070 and 14.112 megahertz segment of the 20 meter band is most often used by digital transmissions. Avoid DX propagation beacons. Now we've talked about how the lower side band is typically used uh, for uh, digital communications. In some cases, the upper side band is actually used. Uh, and it's used to, for the standard operation of, uh, to generate uh, uh, JT65, JT9, and FT8 digital signals uh, when using uh, AFSK on any amateur radio band. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that USB is the standard sideband used to generate JT65, JT9, FT8 digital signals when using AFSK in any amateur band. Again, it is wise to spend time on the ARRL band plan uh, sheet and uh, on their web page. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that uh, the uh, 3570 to 3600 kilohertz segment of the 80 meter band is most commonly used for digital transmissions. Likewise, you need to know that uh, uh, below the RTTY segment near uh, 14.070 megahertz is the segment on the 20 meter band uh, that's for the PSK31 operations, and, and that's where they're commonly found. While some uh, digital communications allows break-in, um, PACTOR is not one of them. Uh, so for the exam, you need to know that uh, joining an existing contact is not possible with PACTOR uh, connections are limited to two stations. Another popular tool with uh, a lot of uh, emergency management offices uh, when working with uh, Aries and Racies is WinLink, which is a global radio email service. Um, for the exam, you need to know that a way to establish contact with digital messaging system gateway station is to transmit a connecting message on a station's pro uh, published frequency. I've just recently uh, started uh, playing around with the uh, FT8 um, mode uh, myself. Uh, but for the exam, you need to know that a characteristic of the FT8 mode of the WSJT-X family is typical exchanges are limited to call signs, grid locators, and signal reports only. Depending on your age, uh, this may or may not be a familiar site to you. Uh, it's kind of an antique at this point. Um, it's a... Uh, serial connector. It's a DE9 type connector. Uh, we need to know it because a lot of the older equipment still use these and there are adapters that go from this to USB. So for the exam know that a DE connector would be a good choice for serial data ports. Uh, we briefly touched on WinLink earlier. Uh, I personally have never used it. 
uh, some emergency management offices do use it. Uh, uh, for the exam, you just need to know that WinLink is a communication system that sometimes uses the internet to transfer messages. So go from uh, your radio to uh, another radio and then to the internet and then possibly another radio on the other end. As a general license holder, you're not expected to know the uh, protocols and the uh, technical aspects of digital communications. Uh, but you do need to know that if you cannot decode an RTTY or FSK uh, signal, even though it is apparently uh, tuned in properly, the following might uh, be the cause of your issue. Uh, the mark and space frequencies uh, may uh, be reversed. Uh, you may have uh, selected the wrong baud rate, or you may be uh, listening to, on the wrong sideband. Uh, because of the nature of some uh, digital modes, uh, it uses the uh, correct time uh, to start and stop transmissions. And this is a requirement uh, for the FT8 digital mode. So for the exam, uh, know that a requirement of using the FT8 digital mode is that your computer time is accurate within one second. And this concludes uh, Lesson 2. Uh, part two. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's lesson or, and are getting excited about the day that you pass the exam and you can begin your journey on the lower bands. Your homework is to start taking practice exams if you haven't already done so, and you can do this on your smart device or your favorite website, uh, such as mine, which is uh, qrz.com. And what I like about uh, their testing, or at least it was when, when I took the exam back in the day, is they provided positive feedback uh, if you didn't answer something correctly. And it even allowed you second chances or, uh, to uh, guess it again. And that personally helped me to learn, uh, but that's, that was my learning style. Yours may be different. Um, I find very little utility in having to wait to the end of the quiz to find out if you answered something correctly or not, because um, if you're question, questioning uh, your answer, it may impede or uh, impair your ability to answer the next or su uh, subsequent question. Um, so if you haven't already done so, uh, please subscribe to the channel to receive updates on upcoming videos. Post any comments and questions you have below, and I will answer them as time permits. Until next time, never stop learning.